Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And it's the 29th of July as I'm recording this one. And um, what I'd like to talk about is, um, yep, three events. It's been a very interesting week, uh, let's say, for the, uh, for the deep state, so to speak. Um, one event, of course, in the United States, one in Canada, and one in good old Blighty in England. I think I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with the one in England because um, it's been quite a farce, right? Yes. What happened was that um, Channel Four, Channel Snore, as I like to call them, because I mean, you know, they, I find it very, very hard to stay awake when they're on. Well, actually, I wouldn't know. Don't have a telly. Don't watch mainstream media. Haven't for a long time. And it was been a long time since Channel Four was any good. It was okay in the 1980s. Anyway, that aside. Um, <laughs> Yes, Channel 4 done a, a documentary where one of their people who was undercover got together with a canvasser for Reform UK, the party. And this man turned out, apparently, to be a very well outspoken, shamelessly outspoken, racist, white supremacist, all of it, right? And um, he had no qualms about any of the things that he would say. Now, in this day and age, of course, with cancel culture, with everyone having mobile phones and you never know that you're being recorded. There's absolutely no one out there that would be habituated to speaking like that in public these days. So it did seem a little bit odd that this person um, said that. So I'm going to play a clip. Apparently the name of this man is Andrew Parker. And I'm going to play you a clip from that Channel 4 undercover documentary. And then you can see uh, this. Then of course I'll, I will deepen the rabbit hole after that. So watch this clip and see you at the other end. Yes, go. What's your name, fella? Andy. Andy. Mr. Parker tells our investigator he's known Farage for years. Yeah, I met him in a restaurant in London. Yeah. And I said, we well, get because we're quite a laugh with him. Yeah. Do us a favour, get your ass out and uh, put yourself up for candidate. Candidate. He's run me a couple of times. I've texted him. So he's getting on. We're assigned to go out canvassing with Mr. Parker. In the car, there's a pep talk about what to say on the doorstep. The immigration thing, use the word illegal, emphasise illegal, especially if you open the door as a bunch of The reform canvasser then gives his view on Muslims and what the party would do with mosques. Sick, mate, sick mother it's a cult. Lord, I'll tell you what, if you don't know about Islam, it's the most disgusting cult out. With kicking all Muslims out of the mosques and then turning them into spoons. <laughs> as well as his opinion on the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. Yeah. I've always been a Tory voter. What annoys me is, we got him. What's good is he? You tell me, you know, he's just wet. What, Sunak? Useless. The, uh, the Ford party? Yes. Would you be interested? Quite a bit, well, That's like complete shit. Yeah. If you go back something like 10,000 years, and the Scot Scotland was hotter than Spain. I've got dear 11 year in a place near Dover, army recruit, you get the young recruits there, yeah, with guns on the beach, target practice. To show them. That's what the Greeks done. They know about that. They know the yeah, Greeks yeah. shot at us. Yes. Look at the Australians. <laughs> I've just seen the ring fence Brad for Stan round the <laughs> just do that. I was like, I've got, I mean, got these bastards running our country. You must be fing <laughs> joking, mate. Good luck, Keep flying that flag. <laughs> so the reason I'm going to reform is because the situation is that Rishi Sunak ain't worth pissing yeah, on, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And do us a favour, you're a paramedic yeah. and in and, 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 uh, not getting your ambulance, just dump oxygen on the bar so you say it else. You know where I'm coming from. That's a yes. Yeah. No, we're all okay, old mate. All right? yeah, yeah, okay, no worries. Thank you. So it turns out that this bloke is an actor, and that's not even his real accent that you're hearing now. Yes, this Andrew Parker has a page on uh, a site called Mandy where he's advertising himself as an actor. He's a full up um, paid member of equity. Now, look, the thing is, right, if he's still there, no one's reprimanded him for this and he hasn't got in trouble for any of these things. And Lawrence Fox never said anything that bad, but um, you know, he can't get any acting work anymore. So this bloke was really shameless and really blatant in his opinion, calling Rishi Sunak a P word, talking about 
wanting to um, you know, use um, illegal immigrants as target practice and all of that stuff. No one says this stuff openly. No one, says, no one joins a political party and then says this stuff openly, so blatantly like that. Maybe if you went back to the 1970s, you could find people who were that blatant or whatever. But these days, you'd never find anyone who would talk like that. And it just makes it seem very unreal. Now, um, so if I, you've seen that page, right? There's another page where one of the things that he um, specializes in is secret filming, apparently. And um, there was a third party media outlet, can't remember the name of them, who was supposed to be working with Channel 4. And there is a possibility, though I cannot confirm anything one way or the other, that Hope Not Hate were involved in this too. Now, there's a lot of very, very strange coincidences. And it's hard to confirm one way or the other where anything what I'm saying is true. Um, what I'm saying is speculation based on coincidence that I see. Now, what I see is that um, someone or some entity, some organisation, put this man up to go into full-on method mode and to um, be this character, right? So that he could um, ruin the reputation of um, the Re Reform UK. Now, he's not actually a member of the party, he was a canvasser and anyone can become a canvasser and if you want to ruin the reputation of a party you could get an actor to be a canvasser and say all the inappropriate things that they wouldn't want them um, to be said in public and then of course the uh what to say the gatekeepers of um the woke world will then um spin it as real and um this appears to be exactly what has happened but if you go to his, um, I think he's got a showreel page where he introduces himself and this is his normal accent. Hello, my name's Andrew Park. I'm an ex extreme experienced actor. I've been in plenty of films. I've worked with quite a lot of A-listed actors. I've done a lot in Pinewood Studios, a lot in Warner Brothers. I've also been flown over to Serbia to be involved as a character in a video game. Right, you've heard that. And this is him playing a character with what he calls his rough speaking accent. If I had my way, this lot would be out of here, I'm telling you. Absolute waste of drinking space. The whole lot of them think they're some sort of Brad Pitt or they're doing some big movie scene somewhere. Most of them wouldn't be good enough at the church uh, tele nativity play. Wasting my time, wasting everyone's time. It's about time they got themselves off their asses and done a proper bloody job. There you go. You can hear there's somewhat of a subtle difference. He's not very posh sounding. He's kind of like got a uh, estuary dialect. Not unlike mine. Not like mine, but not unlike mine. All right. His voice is very different to mine, but you can tell he comes from the same part of the country. And he's got this kind of reasonably well-spoken accent with a few moderated cockney bits in it. Not unlike me. Right. But it'd be really easy like, for me to put on an accent like that and say all these geezers down the boozer and all that if I wanted to. And I'd pretend I'd talk like that for all day if I wanted to, couldn't I? There you go. Right. So this bloke was in character pretending to be, you know, in full method acting mode, pretending to be his rough speaking dodgy villain character that he plays apparently. And he said all of those things. I also noticed in that clip, he said something about... Uh, but back in the day, about a thousand years ago, Scotland used to be warmer than Spain. Why did he say that? He said that because they want to associate climate scepticism with far right. That's what they want to do. They threw that in. So it kind of makes me wonder if, um, if, if you know, he was given a whole set of opinions that he needed to have as well, as um, all of these blatantly racist um, opinions as well. I don't see any evidence, nevertheless, that equity have cancelled him. No. Uh, I had not heard anything about that. I don't think he's been given the Lawrence Fox treatment at all. So it does, um, this whole thing does raise a lot of questions rather than answers. Now in this Channel 4 documentary, they also got a few clips of um, some other members, apparently of the inner circle, who were drinking outside a pub, who um, saw a police car go by with a rainbow flag on, and um, this is a clip of them. On a sunny afternoon, we're joined by Farage's ground team at the pub. A police car is spotted driving by with a rainbow pride flag on its bonnet. You see that degenerate flag on the front bonnet? What are the old Bill doing promoting that crap? He's be out catching nonsense, not promoting our, our police officers will be paramilitaries, they won't be police. Just we're we're going to bring back the news. 
So if you get those two clips and you put them together, it's very easy to make it look to the normie, the untrained eye, the person who lacks discernment, if you like, to think that the party is full of bigots. But unlike that first bloke, unlike Andrew Parker, these people um, were saying things that a lot of, uh, how to say, members of working class England probably think. And the reason why I say this is because from what I can tell, there's pride flags everywhere in June. They even, uh, you know, they paint uh, the rainbows on police cars. They even fit out entire fleets of trains to have that rainbow flag on the seats, on the floor, on the ceilings, on the walls and all that. And it must cost a lot of money. I mean, the bill must cost come to millions. So therefore, um, if the trains are privatised, it means they have to put up the fares. Unless, of course, the government pays them to do it, in which case they have to put up the taxes to compensate for it. And, um, you know, the, the thing about it is that, um, from what, I, what I've said to you many, many times before, I kind of identified myself from very early on, from some time in the mid to late 80s, as someone who was not homophobic, who was very, you know, open to um, be that way, non-homophobic. When I, when during the time of AIDS, and when I knew when people out in the, um, how to say, the sticks in the working classes and out in the outskirts of London um, were very hostile towards gay people and gay culture, now, these, this time that we're in at the moment, almost 40 years later, it's not like that at all. But there are a lot of people, I'd imagine, in the UK who are absolutely sick to death of seeing the, um, you know, the, the way that the pride flag and the way this a sort of certain agenda is happening shoved <laughs> in your face all the time. And if you don't go along with it, you're told you're homophobic, even if you're not. And, and, and it's kind of got to the point where it is pretty much intolerable to be treated like that. At the same time, you know, there are certain pride events where there are certain things that happen, rather sleazy things that happen, that really shouldn't happen. And I don't want to go into any more detail, but again, a lot of people know about that. And, you know, do I have to justify my own position? I mean, it's very easy to say, oh, gay okay, friends, I don't mind. And people say that, and then they, they automatically say, oh, you're just saying that, but underneath it, you're homophobic, because that's the way they always think. Well, no, it's not true. You know, when I went to Costa Rica, um, it just so turned out that the people who helped me the most um, when me and Angela needed to get married and come over to Costa Rica, find the right lawyer and all of that, were these uh, two gay men who became our friends uh, from America. They were even there as witnesses to the wedding. So there you go. That would not be a very homophobic friendly uh, thing to do, would it? It would be to invite gay people to your wedding. So there, there you go. So... The thing is, right, that I can understand a lot of people would have those conversations in pubs and say that they're sick to death of seeing, you know, a lot of, what you say, debauchery and degeneracy happening during pride things and how a lot, a lot of it looks like as if it's trying to get to an agenda where it's trying to turn a blind eye to paedophilia. Um, and um, that's a separate issue from whether individuals are gay or not. And there are plenty of people who are gay who don't go along with the whole pride thing, don't um, use the flag or anything like that because they don't want to be associated with this uh, collective frenzy. Right, so this is more sort of a political issue. Why do police need to have rainbows on their cars? That's the thing. What have the police got to do with any of this, you know? Nothing. Nothing at all. Why do trains have to have rainbows on them? What's that got to do with anything? Bugger all. Why does Regent Street have to be draped in flags that only really, you know, cater to somewhere between 0.1 and 3% of the entire population? And why do you have harsher penalties for destroying one of those flags? And he would, the flag of your country. A lot of people ask those questions, and rightly so they should ask those questions. So if you get that last clip that I paid you, played you of those blokes complaining about the rainbow flag on the police car, yeah, people do have their conversations. But then if you go back to this Andrew Parker character, no one talks like him anymore. That sort of level of blatant um, bigotry and, you know, just uh, mindlessly ignorant stuff, no one talks like that anymore. Only the stupidest of people. People like that don't talk like that, own BMWs, um, look well off and, um, you know, uh, or was it canvas for political parties? They wouldn't get very far. There is something very doubtful about that situation. And um, so, you know, that really does need to be looked into. And considering the fact that they tried to make um, um, Nigel Farage out to be pro-Putin and um, how they tried also, uh, you know, he, was, he had a milkshake thrown at him, he had flipping bits of concrete thrown at him. There's definitely um, a 
like I say, some vested interests in the, the far left narrative that keeps the globalist Western world going at the moment, and they don't want the competition. So they are going to make it hard for him. And it's, to me, this is just like absolutely naked levels of corruption that make us make me think we're no longer a civilized country anymore. If that's a level of dirty trickery that is going to be used, right? At the same time, um, you know. Uh, as, as this is kind of going to expose to a lot of people and a lot of awake people that these dirty tricks are there and it's actually, I think, going to do wonders for uh, reform if not in the short term, then definitely in the long term because people are going to, and more and more people are going to wake up to the fact that this level of sort of dishonesty and corruption that's going on is dishonesty and corruption and less and less people are going to believe it and so they will lose their grip on the narrative, they are losing it very fast over in America, of course, there was the uh, Trump-Biden debate. I've got to play this clip. I decided to add some canned laughter to it. It's only a short clip, right? But uh, check this out. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. <laughs> there you go. And shortly after that, in the next, um, in the next segment, um, Trump refers to him as Brandon to his face you know remember that let's go Brandon meme so uh, you know he's not holding back but one thing Donald Trump did do in that election was he shut up and let Biden finish or in certain cases unfinish his sentences so Biden could just hang himself but at the same time, at the end of the debate, when uh, Biden's brain appears to be breaking down and, uh, you know, the medication that's supposed to make his brain a little bit more functional didn't always work. He looks like he's stumbling and mumbling, as he usually does. He was too frail to come away from the podium by himself and needed um, his wife and some member of the behind-the-scenes crew in the studio to, to help him to walk off. And this was captured, which is one of those things that, of course, is not shown by the television networks, but the, that camera angle was leaked onto the media so that everyone could see. And, um, you know, yeah, Joe Biden's finished. He ain't, he ain't going to campaign to be president anymore because it looks like elder abuse to keep him going. Whereas Donald Trump looks like he's getting through all of this. So throwing everything at Donald Trump, just like the way they've thrown everything at Farage, and he's just coming out the other end. All right, now, yes, there will be people out there who'll be saying, oh, this is all just another look the other way conspiracy. There's something else that's going on. These people are all actors. Now, I don't know. You don't actually know that, do you? The fact is, though, I see a turn in the tide, and I think it's a good turn in the tide to see. And you've got to get whatever hope you can get, really. Now, if you don't believe that anything is uh, anything other than a conspiracy, and we end up in a situation where we get our freedom and our prosperity back, our freedom of speech back, we get rid of all the globalists, and um, we get rid of all the evildoers in this world, the conspiracy people out there that are going to say, oh, that's just an illusion, there's something else coming, and it's even worse than this, because that's the way they think. Do you really want to be that black-pilled? I don't think it's a good idea. Now, of course, I'm going to end uh, finally on, um, you know, Tommy Robinson, who has been getting in trouble everywhere he goes for absolutely bugger all. Hope not hate, yes, our favourite people in the UK, uh, put a dossier towards, uh, you know, the government in the UK, which means that Tommy Robinson is supposed to go to court on the 29th and there might be a prison sentence for some trumped up contempt of court charge. I don't know uh, really the full details about it, but it's supposed to be happening two days after that rally that he's trying to arrange in London on the 27th of July. But he nearly didn't make it back from Canada. He got uh, arrested as he came out of a speaking gig. Um, they said that there was something uh, wrong with his visa or something like that. Anyway, um, what happened was he arrived on his Irish passport, and being another plastic paddy myself, I have a British and an Irish passport too. So he decided to use his Irish passport to go to Canada, and um, he just said he was being a tourist. They gave him a six-month stamp. But then after Ezra, Rev Ezra Levant from Rebel Media met him and said, oh, why don't you do a talk with us? And he didn't say that he was there on a speaking tour. They decided that he breached the conditions of his visa, arrested him and put him under house arrest, took his passport off him and wouldn't give him any more information. And Ezra, Ezra Levant and his um, legal team got together and got Tommy off very quickly. Apparently, they were trying to say that if he was on a speaking tour he would only be allowed into Canada for five days and it turned out they were lying about the law. It turned out that no, 
he could do up to five dates over the six month period and that would be okay. So they lied about that and in the end they had to let him off. It cost a lot in legal fees as well, apparently. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, Tommy Robinson got freed and uh, this is his announcement of his uh, freedom that I found on X. So watch this. So, I have my passport back. I'm on my way to Toronto, which is a massive win. Um, which wouldn't have happened without your support and without the lawyers, okay? It just wouldn't have happened. I wasn't even allowed to go home. I'm now going to travel to Toronto, give my speech, exercise my free speech in the best way possible at an event. You can still get tickets to that. It's at uh, tommytour.ca. It's on Sunday. And, um, yeah, I've, returned, I've had my tickets, my passport returned. Ezra, what's your thoughts? Tommy, this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, David and Goliath uh, doesn't even capture it. Not only are you free to go and give a speech in Toronto, but there's no deportation order, there's no ban. You are leaving as a welcome and honored guest. We're delighted to have you. And every single Canadian who saw that arrest the other day knows that has never happened before. Trudeau has never arrested, let alone sent eight cops to arrest someone for immigration reasons. He's never banned them from traveling. It was two-tier policing. And I wanna thank our super lawyers for fighting for freedom. I haven't got their legal bill yet. If you want to help me, go to savetommy.com. But all credit to the lawyers. And I want to tell you, sometimes you think you can't win when you fight the I government. Think we could win. But you got to try. And today's a great victory day. Congrats, Tommy. Yeah, no, I'm happy. And Michael, thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm glad that you had a, a positive outcome. It was, a, it was a great outcome. I wasn't expecting that outcome either, if I'm honest. I wasn't expecting it. And yes. I know that behind the scenes, you were looking at every other avenue of what we could legally do, if not. Yeah, no, we were looking at the other options, and frankly, this was the best option and uh, the one we hoped for. And luckily, they were very reasonable about it. Uh, you know, I got to hats off to them. They did not have to do this. And uh, I'm just glad they did. So am I. And I don't think without your support, Navi, as well, thank you. Thank you so much. We're, we're glad at the positive outcome. and. Uh looking forward to that event on Sunday. Without lawyers, honestly, without lawyers, I'd be stuck in Calgary. It's my daughter's birthday next week, yeah, which is what I was concerned about. I didn't want to say it publicly. It's my daughter's birthday. I weren't even allowed to go home. So I'm not just allowed to go do my tour. I've got my passport back, okay? Free to go. So I'll be going, I'll be going to Toronto. I'm excited. I'm shocked as well. And, and it is a David versus Goliath. And uh, it generally shows, for me, it proves that what's happened this week shouldn't have happened. I should have been free to go to Edmonton. I should have been free to travel this country. I should have been free to give my discussions and my talks. And now I'm coming to Toronto. So make sure you're there, tommytour.ca. All right. Let me make a final thank you to Justin Trudeau. Because if he hadn't arrested Tommy, this whole thing wouldn't have blown up. 30 million people saw the video of that arrest. And he turned this into a free speech crisis and we won. If he had just left you alone, Tommy, you would have done your tour and gone home and it wouldn't have been a big deal. Justin Trudeau once again shot himself in the foot. You helped increase freedom for Canadians. I just wanted to say that. Do you know what I'll say as well? Do you know those officers couldn't have been nicer the entire time? It's from true. start to finish, yeah? True. So even, even when I was arrested and got to the police station, they could not have been nicer. So they didn't want to do it. It was very clear they did not want to carry out that action. They were forced to. So yeah, I'm on the way to Toronto, man, and I'm buzzing. See you there. Now, a lot of people are probably going to be wondering, well, why at night? Why are you focusing on people like that? Why have all your videos been about things like this? Are you going right wing too? They'll be saying. Because <laughs> this is the level of low density, low resolution that people are thinking. And it's terrible. Look, the way things are going at the moment is we've got this digital panopticon that's been built around us. There are certain things that they want for us on the Klaus Schwab and all his lot and his global, um, was it, is his Young Global Leaders program, which have included like Sunak, Keir Starmer probably, um, as well as uh, Justin Castro Trudeau, all of these people. Um, they've been shoving all this cultural Marxist shit down our throats and a lot of people are absolutely fed up of it. And of course, are we not fed up of being accused of being far right for not agreeing with them? And, um, you know, I've, say, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If I don't agree with that narrative and I don't agree with that message um, that seems to be permeating its way through the woke West, um, they will say that I am far right. I mean, look at me, I look like a hippie. I look, I'm a... Oh, there you go, a cock -a doodle do You hear that all the time here in uh, the Philippines. I asked the wife, 
what is cock a doodle do how do they say it in in her language and apparently they don't do cock a doodle do here they say tick till ok doesn't sound anything like it to my ears anyway must carry on so yes if they have moved the Overton window so much that people cannot tell what the real far right are because then of course someone who looks like me is now far right um, and people who are not old enough to remember the bother boot wearing skinheads, the goose stepping Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan in their full regalia with those silly white pointed hats, um, then people will not be able to recognise the real far right when they come along and they really do exist and they're still there they're not the biggest problem in the world they're not the problem they used to be because a lot of us have become aware of what that threat is and we won't let it happen so as a result with this supply and demand problem they have to create an artificial far right that isn't actually that far to the right and probably closer to the center or what would have been once the center left and i kind of that's kind of where i would have been positioned back in the day you know center left um probably dead in the center a hair's breadth to the left you know more towards libertarian than authoritarian but most certainly not far right i mean my god that's preposterous you know, but there's more chance of me having green skin, you know, and um, three eyes and antennae, you know, and um, there'd be no gravity. <laughs> I mean, that's how ridiculous and preposterous it all is. So as they try to make it out that everyone who doesn't agree with them and their rather limited and rather stupid, skewed, bullshit, preposterous joke version of reality is far right then that means if everyone's far right, no one's far right. So when the real far right come, they will be not very easy to identify for a lot of people. And they'll be just waiting in the wings, ready to pounce. But then they've already decided, ah, well, you know, we can't tell the difference between these malevolent, psychopathic, you know, skinheads with knuckle dusters with razor blades on the end of them and facial tattoos and bother boots who are ready to beat us all up for not being the same as them. And they won't be able to tell the difference between them and me. This is potentially very dangerous if that level of ignorance is not challenged. And so if you don't speak out against them, for fear of them calling you that, then, you know, then we can't actually, nothing can be done about it. So, I think whatever victory we can get, whatever victories we can get, Donald Trump basically um, ruined um, Joe Biden in the debate. That's one good thing. Um, despite all what they are throwing at Nigel Farage and what they are throwing at Reform UK, it was very easily exposed that what was going on, the dirty tricks that were going on, and you know, the gatekeepers can keep on pushing out false narratives all they want. More and more people are going to wake up to this bullshit. And also what happened in Canada, where they acted unlawfully and attempted to detain Tommy Robinson against his will based on nothing. Just because, again, you've got this group called the Anti-Hate Network in Canada, which are a carbon copy of Britain's Hope Not Hate. I think they were involved in that. Well, that didn't work. And this is what you're going to find more and more as we go into the future. We've got that march, apparently, the English Patriot March, which is coming up on um, the uh, 27th of July. We'll see how that goes. But you know what? I think they're going to behave themselves. I think no matter what they're going to try to pin on Tommy Robinson, they're going to find it very difficult to make this group of people angry. And it's not going to kick off. And the only kickoff that you're going to hear about will be from the counter protest. And um, because they won't be enough, because, uh, how do I say, the, the old far right hooligans won't be far right and hooligan enough, they're going to have to find whatever violence they can from any counter protest and pretend that it happened in Trafalgar Square, right? That's why I see it's happening. And of course, um, you know, as, a, as there will be a Labour government, we'll just have to see how that goes um, in the UK. And over the next five years, um, we will see um, as the post woke world grows from seed, we'll see what direction it goes in. And I reckon it's going to be very interesting. But one thing I do warn everyone about is, as I said, there are some real far right characters out there. And a lot of these people will be very noticeable in, on the continent of Europe. Because again, you know, proportional representation gets all sorts of people. You do get a few wrong ones who will hijack that cause. Um, because this is what happens again, you know, saboteurs will come in and attempt to hijack the cause and make it about extremism. And these people have to be found, they have to be vetted, they have to be tamed. And I'm sure they will be. 
But uh, it's going to be a hard time trying to flush these people out. But Europe, especially like um, you know Central Northern Europe, which does have a history of extreme right wing, extreme left wing, is going to have a hard time being able to weed these people out. But if enough people are aware enough, and this conversation is had, and the more moderate people of sound mind, who are peaceful, who want to be free for all the right reasons, who have good moral compasses, are able to um, you know to bring these people in check and say no we can't have this then the next five years will be very interesting and yes I'm extremely optimistic about that so we'll see how it goes I'll be interested to hear what you have to say right I shall leave you with that see you later alligator see you soon baboon if you like this content don't forget to like subscribe and share and while you're at it check out all our social media links Please help this channel grow, your help will be appreciated.